Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ichiro. I am back again um, with another reading from the Hans Christian Andersen collection of fairy tales that we have been uh, following the past couple of days. So I'm going to share my screen right now. Okay, so today's reading will be from page 107 um, of the Hans Christian Andersen um, collection of fairy tales that we have been using. All these stories are in the public domain. Um, please check the description box for those of you on YouTube for the link to the collection of fairy tales. That way you can access these stories. Um, you can also just follow along in this video. And um, I'm just also, no, I don't need to post the link in the chat box anymore, I don't think. Um, if you just check the description for today's meetup, the link should be the same every day. It's the same Zoom, it's the same password. So you should be able to um, access this every day, same platform. Um, I also try to be here sometimes just for a couple of hours in case anyone throughout the day is interested. Hopefully we might catch each other at the same times. Um, apart from that, uh, things are exactly the same way they were before and we will just continue the story. Today's story is The Farmyard Cock and the Weathercock. There were once two cocks. One of them stood on a dunghill the other on the roof. Both were conceited. But the question is, which of the two was the more useful? A wooden partition divided the poultry yard from another yard, in which lay a heap of manure sheltering a cucumber bed. In this bed grew a large cucumber, which was fully aware that it was a plant that should be reared in a hotbed. It is the privilege of birth, said the cucumber to itself. All cannot be born cucumbers. There must be other kinds as well. The fowls, the ducks, and the cattle in the next yard are all different creatures. And there is the yard cock. I can look up to him when he is on the wooden partition. He is certainly of much greater importance than the weather cock, who is so highly placed, and who can't even creak, much less crow. Besides, he has neither hens nor chickens, and thinks only of himself, and perspires for a degree. But the yard cock is something like a cock. His gait is like a dance, and his crowing is music. And wherever he goes, it is instantly known. What a trumpeter he is. If he would only come in here, even if he were to eat me up, stalk and all, it would be a pleasant death. So said the cucumber. During the night, the weather became very bad. Hens, chickens, and even the cock himself sought shelter. The wind blew down with a crash, the partition between the two yards. And the tiles came tumbling from the roof. But the weather cock stood firm. He did not even turn around. In fact, he could not, although he was fresh and newly cast. He had been born full grown and did not at all resemble the birds such as the sparrows and swallows that fly beneath the vault of heaven. He despised them and looked upon them as little twittering birds that were made only to sing. The pigeons, he admitted, were large and shone in the sun like mother of pearl. They somewhat resembled weathercocks, but were fat and stupid and thought only of stuffing themselves with food. Besides, said the weathercock, they are very tiresome things to converse with. The birds of passage often paid a visit to the weathercock and told him tales of foreign lands, of large flocks passing through the air and of encounters with robbers and birds of prey. These were very interesting when heard for the first time, but the weathercock knew the birds always repeated themselves and that made it tedious to listen. They are tedious and so is everyone else, said he. There is no one fit to associate with. One and all of them are wearisome and stupid. The whole world is worth nothing 
it is made up of stupidity. The weathercock was what is called lofty, and that quality alone would have made him interesting in the eyes of the cucumber, had she known it. But she had eyes only for the yard cock, who had actually made his appearance in her yard, for the violence of the storm had passed. But the wind had blown down the wooden palings. What do you think of that for crowing? asked the yard cock of his hens and chickens. It was rather rough and wanted elegance, but they did not say so. As they steeped upon the dunghill, while the cock strutted about as if he had been a knight. Garden plant, he cried to the cucumber. She heard the words with deep feeling, for they showed that he understood who she was, and she forgot that he was pecking at her and eating her up. A happy death. Then the hens came running up, and the chickens followed, for where one runs, the rest run also. Then the hens came running up, and the chickens followed, for where one runs, the rest run also. They clucked and chirped and looked at the cock and were proud that they belonged to him. Cock a doodle doo, cried he. The chickens in the poultry yard will grow to be large fowls if I make my voice heard in the world. And the hens and chickens clucked and chirped, and the cock told them a great piece of news. A cock can lay an egg, he said. And what do you think is in that egg? In that egg lies a basilisk. No one can endure the sight of a basilisk. Men know my power, and now you know what I am capable of also, and what a renowned bird I am. And with this, the yard cock flapped his wings, erected his comb, and crowed again, till all the hens and chickens trembled. But they were proud that one of their race should be of such renown in the world. They clucked and they chirped so that the weathercock heard it. He had heard it all, but had not stirred. It's all stupid stuff, said a voice within the weathercock. The yard cock does not lay eggs any more than I do, and I am too lazy. I could lay a wind egg if I liked, but the world is not worth a wind egg. And now I don't intend to sit here any longer. With that, the weathercock broke off and fell into the yard. He did not kill the yard cock, although the hen said he intended to do so. And what does the moral say? Better to crow than to be vainglorious and break down at last. This has been the farmyard cock and the weathercock. And here's the picture right here. Farmyard cock, weathercock. Interesting tale. Thank you for joining in today with me. I will be reading another story later. I also hopefully will be um, uploading that onto YouTube. Thank you for those of you who were able to join me. Thank you so much. I um, hope to see more people. Bring your friends. Read too if you want. Um, just uh, some final things to say. If you want to access the reading, you can always access them here. If you want to join the Zoom meeting, you can join the Zoom meeting here. And also, this is our meeting ID and our passcode. Um, something that's important for me also to uh, reiterate, this event is free and it is open to the public. If you would like, please consider giving to the host or the main reader via PayPal at jiroanaibe1 or interact at edgeanaibe at gmail.com. That is me. I am the default main reader. Giving is much appreciated because every dollar gives to the group fees and keeps this meetup running daily. Other readers may provide their personal payment details too for the days that they present readings. I want to thank you all for your love and support. You are valuable and you are wanted here. Just to give a preface too of uh, Hans Christian Andersen tales, I think I'll try to do this right before um, each tale that I do. Um, just to get us grounded into the mood of what I'll preface. The present volume is the second of the selected stories from Hans Andersen. Together, the books include what, out of a large number, are the best for children's use. The storytelling activity of this inimitable, this inimitable genius covered a period of more than 40 years. As was said in the preface to the first volume, wherever there are children to read, 
the stories of Hans Christian Andersen will be read. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope to see you later. Have a wonderful day. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Thank you, thank you all, thank you all. You're so appreciated. Have an awesome, awesome sauce day, everybody. Bye-bye.